Well then guys, Betty's back. Right today, so it is another a review but with a recipe. So I've been asked by Am's Chef if I would um, review one of their blenders. It's an Am's Chef countertop blender. So I'll be uh, showing you the unboxing and we will be doing, since it's Halloween, a roast pumpkin soup in there using the blender. And also I'll be making some sort of uh, fruit smoothie to go as well, just as a little short video. So let's get cracking with it. Right, so here it is. This is the Amchef countertop blender. Model da -da, high power and stability designed for heavy food loads. Digital screen, low noise, easy to clean. And this is comes in black. Let's not look if there's any more product information. Here we go. It's the same stuff on the back. So we'll uh, crack on with the unboxing. Yeah, I'm just going to quickly run through the instruction manual here. Um, so there we go, the Am Amchef instruction manual countertop blender. So we have obviously the... Hold on. Have I skipped a page there? Yeah, it's like a safety warning. Just common sense stuff, really. Um, getting to know your blender. So, so it comes with a feeding lid, um, a pitcher, a pitcher lid, pitcher, motor base, obviously, and the pusher to help stir food. Stir food. So there's the control panel. You have a start stop button, minimum maximum in standby mode, a pulse button. And it has one, two, three, four preset programs. One is an ice crush. One is a smoothie preset. One is an ice cream preset. And one is a juice preset. So today I'll probably be normal, using the normal blender without any of those for the soup. But for the smoothie, obviously I'll be using the smoothie um, function. So yeah, let's just plug in. Press the pitcher lid down, yeah. Push the start stop button upwards. It'll be better when I'm actually showing you this. So a detailed description of the function buttons. Install the pitcher on the motor base, cover the pitcher. Push the start stop switch upwards, turn on the power, touch the function button. Upwards. Uh, ice cream, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. It's got an adjustable speed on it as well, which uh, it's, these are, you know, it's just the, obviously it's the instruction manual. It's, uh, and it's got a couple of recipes here. So we've got a raspberry smoothie. It says crabberry smoothie, but I'm, I'm assuming that means cranberry, not crabberry. Uh, banana and strawberry ice cream, green apple ice cream. We won't be doing any of that today, but in future, you never know. So that was the instruction manual. Let's get, I'll show you the machine now, just without actually putting anything in it at the moment. I will do that later. Okay, so there's our base unit itself. There is the little stick that you can put in there. This will not turn on or do anything until this is actually, until the lid, until the jug is on there. Once that's on there, and then now it will start up. It won't do that otherwise. So, Hold on, just to show you, you just, to use it normally, you just turn this knob and it's speed controllable. And it sounds very powerful. So that's that. Obviously you've got your functions at the bottom here. So that's your ice crush one, you press that start same with the smoothie same with the ice cream and same with the juice they're all presets but to control it manually and you've got a pulse function as well so if you've got it like like that you can pulse 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 and that's your start and stop simple as that 
So I'm going to give this a wash out and then uh, I'll get cracking with my soup. Before I start I'm just going to show you this, this function at the top. So you twist this off. So if you've been blending whatever you're blending and it's a bit, it needs a stir, obviously while it's offed you, you can then push this in here and as you can see you can give it a, you can give it a zhuzh around and then carry on with, put the lid back on, take that out and it's just a simple matter of, when I can find the bit there, lining it up, turning it back on and then that, twisting that round and it's sealed again, it's as simple as that. So like I said I'm going to give this a wash now and uh, I'll get cracking with my soup. Okay so obviously the star of the show is a pumpkin which I will be cutting up and roasting very shortly. Some salt and pepper, cinnamon powder, nutmeg, one onion. It says four to six garlic cloves but they're very big garlic cloves so I've got two very, one of them's mahoosive. So that, um, one garlic clove which I must fish out at the end otherwise it'll just make the soup unbelievably strong and smart tasting of clove. Um, some runny honey, cayenne pepper, now that is optional if you like a bit of a kick and we do, that's going in for me. If you don't like the kick, you don't like cayenne, don't put it in. Um, some double cream, a thousand millilitres or four cups of vegetable stock, that's two stock cubes. And again, we had these left over, um, some croutons to go on top. You can use the seeds and dry them out. I might keep them, I might not, I don't know, but I'm not going to be using it in this recipe anyway. So, I'll get cracking with it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to be doing is to obviously get this uh, pumpkin chopped up and de-seeded. One more thing I did forget in the list of ingredients, once again, there is some olive oil that goes in there. So, But I have remembered a previous tip of putting a tea towel down under the chopping board. So hey, you can't have it all, can you? <laughs> right, so... Just going to see if I can, I don't think that's going to snap off is it? So I'm going to go the easy route. Nice sharp knife. Well that was easy enough. That's broken half there. Seeds are actually the seeds are. I might actually keep them and dry them out you know some of them pretty big seeds. They are as well. So I'm just wondering if I can get that bit off there before I attempt to... and yes I can. There we go, that makes it a bit easier. So, first side down. Just going to continue to chop this up into manageable chunks that can be roasted. So I'm just trying to get this without doing myself any more damage again. Right, I think that's about perfect. That's one, two, let's have a go with this one. No chance of me carving this out like. <laughs> I remember doing that years ago for the Grand Bains carving a pumpkin out. Never again. I remember in the old days and you had to do, before pumpkins came and you had to use bloody turnips. <laughs> Well, that was a mission that like doing it like that. I remember doing that as a kid. Right so we're getting there, we're getting there. Just gonna chop. 
try. Get this out of the way. Get my fingers out of the way, more importantly. Because I knew what I'm like. That one's, it was only a little nick really, that one, but it didn't half bleed, I'll tell you that. Right, so, let's see if I can get this last bit done without any mishaps. Cut into a, no, that's not working very well, is it? Um, let's just try it this way again. I've got the power. Woohoo! Right, so I'm onto my last piece of this. All I'm doing is getting the. I don't know if I'm going to use these sunflower seeds or not. But anyway, they're quite big. So I might I might actually use them because it says in the recipe to use them and toast them off. I might do. I don't know. So all I've done is put the seeds in one bowl and scraping the pulp out. As you can see, ready for. But there's the. Sunflower seeds, sunflower, I keep calling it, do you know, pumpkin seeds man, <laughs> what am I like, right I'll come back in a second, okay so we have our <coughs> cut pumpkin, I'm just going to use about a tablespoon of oil into here, and what I'm going to do is, maybe a little bit more, so I'm going to, here's another technical term for you, smush them around until they're all coated in that lovely olive oil. Smush it around. I like that word. Smoosh. <laughs> so you end up with like so and I'm going to put these onto a roasting tray lined see if we can get these all in here I hope so uh, we might be struggling to get these onto this I'll be creative Pardon me, blimey, where did that come from? I'm saying I'm just going to wash my hands. Like I said, I've got the oven preheated at 220C and I'm there going in there for 35 minutes or until they're golden brown. There's a song in there, isn't there, somewhere? Golden brown, texture like sun. Right, one second. Into the high sappy NTR. There they go. One has tried to be a little escapee, but he's going back in. You're not having it, mate. You're staying where you are. So, there we go. 35 minutes, it says 36, but 35 minutes and we'll be back. Right, so while that's cooking away in the oven, I've put some, uh, about a tablespoon and a half or so of olive oil into my pan, heating up slowly, and it's just starting, I can see it's coming to the heat. So I chop the onion up, one onion, going in, and the garlic, which I have finely chopped my hand, also going in there. Right, so we're going to let that give you a nice uh, stir around. 
on a medium sort of heat because you don't want your garlic to burn up. So just keep your eye on it and keep stirring it, give it a bit of love. And we're going to cook that for 8 to 10 minutes until they've softened right up and they've gone translucent. Okay, so as you can see, our, <coughs> our pumpkin is out and it's lovely and soft, it's started to break up so I know that it's cooked and it's going to get cooked in the soup anyway. So there we go, that's the uh, pumpkin done, I've just got to wait for it to cool down to get the skins off and use the flesh. Okay, so they've had about 8 to 10 minutes, slowly sweated down and they've gone a bit translucent. I forgot to say I added half a teaspoon of salt into there as well while it was cooking away. So I've managed to, I've let the uh, pumpkin cool down and de-skinned it and it's going to go now into here. I'm just going to smush this up a little bit. Don't worry if there's still a little few bits of skin, it's all caramelised, it's all flavour. Okay. So now it's in with our bits and bots. So this I'm going to have to fish out at some point later before I blend it. Please don't let me forget. <laughs> One clove going into there. So it's half a teaspoon of cinnamon. That is the half teaspoon. Yes it is. Half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Um, I do like, we do like cayenne, you can leave this out if you want, so I'm going to use about half, a quarter, sorry, about a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper, because that's quite potent to be honest. About half a teaspoon of pepper, there we go. And about a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, which I'm just going to grate in. Well done, Ian. into its little housing. Good little gadget that. So I'm just gonna smush these out a bit. And it's in with our litre, thousand millilitres of vegetable stock. In she goes. Lovely jubbly. There we go. So I'm going to turn the heat up. Turn the heat upon this. And bring this up to the boil. Back in a second. Right, as you can see, that is coming up to the boil. So, lid on, turn it down, and we'll see you in 15 minutes. Right, so that's had its 15 minutes. Time. Okay. Let's do it. I'm just taking it off the heat because I'm not going to blend it until I finish tonight. So, so the only thing that's left to go in here is. Half a cup of heavy cream, heavy cream. So, all of that out of the And two tablespoons of honey. And we'll see what we get with this little bit of here. See what we can get. I don't think it's too sugary. 
So I'm going to let this uh, cool down completely. So I've learned it in the, uh, in the armchair blender that I've just got. I'm going to handle this for a little bit to be honest. I am more coming. Press on. And that is already to be blended later on. So we will see a new lot later on. Now I'm second to use. Right, so I'm back. I've managed to get all of that soup into that blender, so it's quite a big capacity on it. So, yeah, it looks like it's ready to go. So here we go. I'm going to give it a blast. I love the control of it. So controllable. Move it right down. Right. Let's have a little look. Oh yes. That looks like it's done its job. Perfectly. So I'm just going to hold on. I'll spin you around and I will just just adjust this a second and I'll pour this back into my bowl. Yep, that has blitzed that to perfection. Really, really good job. You can tell that is a quality machine. Didn't take a lot of effort to get that done at all. And that was on low speed. Not on any of the individual settings, that's just for general blending. So I'm happy with that. Back to the soup and we'll warm it back up when it's time to eat. Right, so there we have it. My um, creamy pumpkin soup and that was blended by the Amschef blender so without further ado it is taste testing time right so what do I think of this machine I think it's a cracking machine to be honest um, you can just tell it's quality you know when you're using it and the blades are so they're so sharp, they've made this soup so creamy. It's unbelievable. Um, I will be doing a short to go with it and I'll be making a smoothie as well. So that'll be out at the same time, but as a short video. So without further ado, I'll try my soup. So with it being Halloween, I've made it quite a little funny little face. A smiley face. <laughs> Eat honestly what you like. Right, so I'm going to dig into this soup. Oh, by the way, I did remember to take the clove out, by the way, in case any of you are thinking that. it's I removed it, so only just remembered, to be fair. <laughs> but I did remove it. Just before it went into the blender. Yeah, so I'm going to try the soup. Wow, that is good. The I don't know if you can just see the, can you come a bit closer there? Just show the consistency. How thick and creamy that is, look. Mm -hmm. It's lovely. 
I must admit, I'm looking forward to using it. I've never had the pumpkin soup for a long, long time. I think it was kids when I had pumpkin soup. But it's really, really nice. We've had butternut squash soup, butternut which is virtually soup. the same. Yeah. But actual pumpkins. No, no. Hmm. Well, we didn't have pumpkins when our kids were little or turnips. It was, it was, I was just saying that earlier on. Yeah. Actually. You have to cow turnips, like instead of kids have got to eat nowadays, don't they? Exactly. But that you can just, again, that little background heat from the cayenne that we put in. Like I say, if you don't like heat, don't put it in. Mm. Well, I've tasted it. I think it would be just as nice without it, but I do like that little bit of a... It's a little bit of a heat. ...bit on the, on the back of the throat. Mm. It's not hot in any way, shape or form. No, just a little, little bit of heat. Uh-huh. It's just an extra seasoning, really, yeah. isn't it? What I love about it is the consistency. Like I say, this blender, we have got... We've got the one with it that's attached to the Kenwood that we can use. But it's that's been in the cupboard. It's never been used. Cause this, it, this will be handy just to drag out. The, it, it does a fantastic job and it has got different functions on it. So I'm going to be, like I said, I'll be doing a short tomorrow. I'll make some sort of smoothie. Um, Do you know, um, when I watch, sorry, didn't mean to no. do it. I'm just thinking when I watch like sort of cookery programs on the TV and the proper chefs have got like this big fancy. That. Uh -huh, and I just think. That looks just like, and you know what I loved, sorry, again, is when you were blending that tonight, you started off slow. You start off real slow. And it's whereas the one with the Kenwood, it yeah. goes from nothing to zoom. It goes like, and, and it's controllable. Obviously, mm -hmm. that's not a preset. So you can start it off slow and then build it up and you can see it going uh, up. Yeah. And up and up. I think it's currently on. It was 100 and, it's, it's through um, Amazon. The link that I will be putting in the description. Um, it was 149, I think, but I think when I checked today on the link that they've got a discount now and it's down to 127. But that is well worth the price. For, for it is honest. expensive. It's a lot of money. It's a decent, but it's a decent right. bit of kit that though. But if you're going to use it, if it's something that you could use, yeah, then rather than spend the money on professional ones that will do exactly the same thing yeah. this one i'm very impressed just watching you use it today i had to, I had to be very careful when i washed it out because yeah, the yeah. blades are like razors i didn't mm -hmm. you know i'm very wary i just sort of like touched it like whoa they're they're sharp um so yeah i'm well happy with the am amz chef i don't know if it's am chef however you pronounce it but that is i'll put a link in the description anyway if anybody's interested in uh, in buying one or yeah so right I'm gonna finish this off again thank you so much for the subscriptions over 2,000 now buzzing buzzing like a bumblebee um, keep the recipe ideas coming keep the likes coming keep the shares coming just yeah we really really appreciate it we really really do so Monday night rest of the week to go man's turn tomorrow so i will catch you guys in a couple of days so thanks for watching guys and we'll see you soon see you later bye for now bye bye